there are pieces of the nose in a couple of museums, but I don't have I don't believe it had anything to do with Napoleon or even the British. There's some evidence that the Arabs actually a thousand years or so ago used it for target practice and shot off the nose. But what I think really is the key is that with an ancient statue, the spirit, if you would, was often represented by, you know, the breath coming in that goes through the nose. So in many cases, they would actually take the nose off of a statue to kill it, if you would, to okay. make it no longer a living object. All right. Now, what can you tell us about the ancient Egyptians before we move on? Several authors and historians have commented on what they perceive as distinct Negroid characteristics on the Sphinx. What, what can you tell oh, us I'm, about Oh, I'm absolutely convinced that the current head of the Sphinx, but as I said, this is a recarved head from dynastic times. I'm convinced that this is an African head, whatever term you want to use. I'm American. We would say um, African or Nubian or, you know, maybe from the Sudan region. And we know that the early dynastic Egyptians, actually there was a much stronger, should we say, African influence um, in Egypt, even in the Pharaonic family. So okay. to me, it's, it's, it's clearly, a, in America, we would say a black African head. Okay. So and this we, is an African civilization, let's right. face it. But when we see Hollywood and cartoons and history as being depicted today, um, what do you say about the authenticity of what they're portraying as ancient Egypt. Oh, it's most of it is not authentic at all. It's really a reconstruction. I've been at actually conferences where this has been discussed by myself and others, where much of Egypt is portrayed as, I hate to say it this way, but as the British reconstructed it in the 19th century in a very, to be blunt, racist point of view, where they wanted to deny the um, African aspects of what is a great African empire. Okay, now Dr. Shaw, cue us in on what is going on with solar burst and what it's all about. Well, right now we are seeing a situation where the sun is becoming very erratic, very volatile, and this is a situation that's been developing in the last 50 to 100 years. Before that, the sun was relatively stable, relatively calm for thousands of years. Where this ties in with my research is that pushing back the age of civilization with my work on the Sphinx and work in Turkey and other work that I've been doing, we'll talk about at the conference, we find that there was an earlier cycle of civilization that was absolutely devastated by natural cataclysms caused by a really major solar outburst at the end of the last ice age. This caused incredible heating of the atmosphere, changes in climates, set off all kinds of catastrophic effects on the surface of the earth. Now, I don't want to be a fear monger, I don't want to scare people, <laughs> but we have to look at real evidence. Right. And the real evidence from isotopic analysis, from ice cores, from sediment cores, all kinds of data is that the sun goes through periods of being very volatile, very erratic, then it essentially calms down for thousands of years, but then it starts getting erratic again. Okay. That's what's happening now in the past century or so. It devastated an earlier cycle of civilization. No more. ENCA.com.